You know, my older brother was like that, so you know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go next. Okay, all right, let's get you caped up. Let's get started, brother. Yeah, just toss it. Yeah, there we go. Known you uh, for quite a long time, you know, and uh, haven't really heard your story. And it's because you're so, young. You yeah. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, 37. Oh, bro. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm 35, right? Right. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I just look young. I'm Asian. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. You guys don't age. <laughs> no, we, we're um, Asians don't raisin, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Usually just shave the, everything off the top? Yeah. Okay. Uh, skin skin or just uh, like a... Like a um... Yeah, skin. Okay. Uh, you want anything off the beard or anything uh, like that? Yeah, you can just, just trim this up here and then just bring this up. Okay. Right about here to the jawline right there? Yeah. Okay. Can you go ahead and say your name, where you're from, what you do? So, Emmanuel Nunez, um, they call me Manny. I'm from here, Crescent City, California. I uh, run my own detail business uh, out, of, out, of, in, out of here in Crescent City. Thank you, man. Thank you again for being here. All right. Yeah. So, let's start from the beginning, brother. You know, I, I know that you used to, um, um, you wasn't you back in the days. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, no, I... Right? I mean, uh, growing up here, I mean, you know, it, it's small town, stuff like that, you know, so we all get to know each other and stuff. But, uh, yeah, no, the person I was before, I just, I mean, I, 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 was, I, was, I was a piece of crap person, you know, <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, I was pretty popular in school, you know, a lot of people, knew, everybody, everybody knew me, basically knew who my family was, and, uh, so growing up, I mean, everybody knew who I was because either my older brother or because of my dad, they knew who he was, stuff like that. Um, you know, and just was good until we hit high school. You know, hitting high school, I mean, well, you know how high school was. It was, yeah. all, se it was all segregated. Oh, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, no, it was. The the Mexicans hung up by themselves. Right. We got the skateboarders, the, you know, the hicks, the... The, the popular kids yeah. in Main Hall, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, being in junior high, you know, we all, friends everywhere, it wasn't even like that, but as soon as we, uh, we had high school, everybody clicked up with everybody, you know, basically your own race mm -hmm. kind of deal. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I ended up hanging out with uh, older people, you know, and seeing, seeing uh, the drugs and stuff being being used and people selling you know making money mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know so i didn't make it but i make it till uh i got expelled my sophomore year dang like uh november of my sophomore year uh-huh i got expelled from high school from uh, just being tardy or no um there's a lot of fights going on with the mexicans and stuff with other ah. with other things yeah, yeah, yeah um and uh just stuff going down like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then the basically the principals at the time basically were because i was you know always there for backup like yeah, making yeah, yeah. sure you know nothing bad was gonna basically nobody jumping nobody kind of yeah 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 you know? it's a one-on-one -on -one, let right. it happen you know what i mean right. yeah yeah but you know being there i was uh, and always being seen so basically the the school was that and then uh you know smoking weed and stuff mm. And, and just being a being a just a troublemaker, they ended up uh, expelling me and saying that you know I was I was basically their statement was I was basically the leader of the the Mexicans. What? <laughs> right? That's what I was, I was like. Yeah, you can't do that. Like, this is Crescent City, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is Crescent City. That's pretty funny though. But yeah, that's what they said. You know, uh, Mr. Shakala over here. Right? I'm like, dude. So I ended up getting expelled sophomore year. Oh wow. And then I went out to Sunset, you know, me and a couple, me and a couple of my boys, you know, mm -hmm. we, we go out to Sunset. That didn't last long either. I mean, because you have to, you know, you have to go to school and you have to do a certain amount of credits out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that didn't last very long. We weren't making credits. We were skipping school a lot. We ended up at probation school. Mm, uh, community day, right? Well, before it was called uh, McCarthy Center. Oh, that's right. And it used to be over there in front of Juvenile Hall. Uh-huh. Oh, man. Hey, you know Juvenile Hall is shutting down. 
Oh, are they? Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't know they were shutting down. Yeah, you know, uh, actually, all of California, um, they're shutting down um, juvenile halls because they don't want that, the, you know, the, the youngins to be used to being locked up. You oh, know what great. I mean? They, they want everybody to be uh, in programs and, you know, like, you know, they're the damn kids, you know what I mean? They, right. they make mistakes and they need someone to help them up, not just lock them up. Right. So, but yeah, no, keep going. Yeah. yeah, but no, if they need, I mean, if they need, if they're getting in more trouble, more trouble, I mean, that's what they need, juvenile hall to lock up. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, um, way back in the days, we had a program called Borrow Boys. Yeah, we, yeah, my brother was in that. <laughs> my did, older brother was in that. Did, did they help him? Uh, no, he went to CYA after that. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and then he went to prison. Oh, man. <laughs> So, I mean, that's basically my mentality was kind of like towards that, you know? Yeah. Having, having that mentality because, you know, my older brother was like that. So, mm. you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go next. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, so I ended up, you know, over there at probation school and started, you know, using drugs. Um, started using like meth, like on the on recreationals. Yo, you know, that's like, like hard party, drugs, yeah. You know, and um, so I got we got into that and started selling it. You know, and um, mm -hmm. and then we were only using like as uh, at parties and stuff like that, at, yeah, and selling it most of the time. And uh, so me and a couple boys were at probation school, and we ended up, uh, you know, we're still doing our thing on the side out, outside of school and stuff. Yeah. And uh, luckily, one of the counselors over there, you know, I, at first I was starting to, you know, at first I, I was being rebellious a lot, didn't want to listen to no teachers, didn't mm -hmm. want to do no work. But mm -hmm. when we got there, we were like, man, dude, with all the other kids that were at that school, we were like, man, I think we were more, a little bit more mature, <laughs> you know, than, yeah. than some of the other, uh, more more mature than a bunch of like, other like kids, Like, you know? put, put together compared like, to them, right? Yeah, yeah like yeah. mentally too, you know, mm -hmm. like, dude, these guys mm -hmm. are a bunch of clowns. Like, yeah, yeah. Man, these kids are ignorant, you uh -huh. know, and uh, so anyways, we had to buckle down to get out of there. You got to do your work and try to, you know, do good. So we yeah. started doing that. We're like, you know what? I don't want to be here no more. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. the I don't want to be around these other kids. These, these guys just don't even have the mentality like we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so you, so you went there, and then you, you graduated. Uh, well, yeah, I graduated over there, uh -huh. and then I, I still had time to go to to go back to Del Norte to graduate with my class. Oh, nice. So I, 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 uh, I wrote Del Norte a letter saying that you know I, I, I completed the basically the program over there and uh -huh. that. You know, I'm I'm good, and they they still they they deny me. They wouldn't let me come back. Oh, they're like, no, nah, we don't want none of this. So mm -hmm. I had to, I had to, I had to end up going to Castle Rock. Oh wow. Yeah, so I graduated from Castle Rock because uh, Del Norte wouldn't take me back. Yeah, but at least you graduated, you right? Know, right. You yeah. know what I mean? That that's an accomplishment in, in itself. You know. So um, you know, and me and me and a couple other my boys, you know, we just uh. Doing our things, you know, selling, you know, getting more into the selling routine. Yeah. You know, and uh, stuff and uh, just selling it and do, get, causing a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. I mean, just being mm -hmm. in trouble a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then uh, we started using a lot more. So instead of becoming, a, you know, a small time uh, drug dealer. And then my grandma passed away. My grandma passed away. I mean, it really hit me hard. Yeah. That's when I really started spiraling down the, the, the really down, down the hill. Uh -huh. You know, where... We were basically, I was, I was basically using more than I was selling Dang, now. Yeah, yeah. So I went from uh, selling drugs, you know, being a, dr a drug dealer to, uh, you know, being a drug addict. Oh, bro. You know, and yeah. And I, I had my kid, my first kid at the age of 18, you know, my first, my first kid. And, yeah. you know, still, that didn't even change me. Mm -hmm, you know, I was, mm -hmm. left her at home with the newborn baby out there partying with my boys, you know. Yeah, you, you know, you were hurt, you know yeah. what I mean? And you yeah. were uh, trying to trying to cope, trying to heal, trying to find yourself, you know what I mean? Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, and I, I did that. I mean, when we first got into introduced to meth, I was like 16 years old, mm -hmm. you know. So, like, my freshman year is when I first, you know, got introduced to the meth. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, yeah, I just seen the people, you know, make – the older people making money off of it so we're like yeah we can do this too you yeah, know like shit man we could do yeah. this better yeah so you know I mean? uh, yeah so we did that for a few years and then ended up you know we just basically selling just enough to, to basically keep ourselves going to to get high yeah you, know? yeah. you selling to get high yeah. yeah and then uh just went down real spiral man just mm -hmm. everything you know mm -hmm. on the after that you know i ended up uh getting her pregnant again you know Two years later, 
You know, so you're 20 I have, now. I have my second kid. You know, and I'm yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm 20. I'm still running them up. You know, I'm end up going to jail a few times. You know, uh, probably about six times altogether, in and out of jail, from uh, you know, from you know, paraphernalia, drugs, from taking a vehicle, you know, without permission, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that, warrants. Um, you know, the cops, all the cops knew me here in town too, so they they. They the leader of the Mexicans. They, they, wanted to, <laughs> they wanted to get me, you know? Yeah, They're yeah. like, man, this guy just needs to be, uh, you know, uh, put away. Yeah, this guy's a you menace know? to society or yeah, something. Yeah, you know? And, and I, at the time, you know, I didn't realize how many people's lives I was ruining. I was, oh, man. You know, even my friends, you know, I thought I was being a friend. And, uh -huh. man, I was just ruining their life. Mm -hmm. I mean, bringing all that stuff into their life, I mean... Being a part of it, not sh showing anybody direction. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know the loss. You know the loss. The blind leading the blind, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, from from that to where you are now, bro. It's like 180 degrees, man. Yeah. It's like you found God. You know right. what I mean? Like, like you're you don't drink anymore. So, you know what I mean? Like, so basically, like uh, when I was at the probation school, they hooked me up with a job at at a body shop here in town. Ah. One of the counselors like, hey, I know, I know the owner of the body shop. I, I could get you in. I think you're, you know, a pretty good kid. Mm -hmm. So I was doing that, and I was so, so he got me a job at the body shop, and uh, that's that's how I got, you know, that's how Manny came along because you mm. know the supervisor's like, Emmanuel's too long. I'm just gonna call you Manny. Ah. And from there on out, it just stuck. So everybody just called me Manny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. But yeah, so I was there, you know, and I was still doing my thing on the side. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Ended up, I was there for like a two years straight. Uh -huh. And then, uh, you know, being using At the, the body shop. Yeah, body okay. shop. And then yeah. using the drugs, you know, kind of uh -huh. made it fall out. So we had a fallout. Yeah, yeah. You know, I quit. Le I left. I came back. I left. I came back. And then I finally left. And that's basically when I was like basically really bad. Mm. And then, um, you know, after, uh, so the, after my second kid when I was 20, you know, the next year I got her pregnant again, so with my third kid. So now I'm 21. You know, she's yeah. she's tired of, you know, my wife's tired of just the the chaos I'm doing. You yeah, know, yeah. She, she's at home by herself with the kids. Never know where I'm at, what mm -hmm. I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know, gone for weeks, not not even checking in. You know, I was a piece of crap, dude. I mean, Damn. piece of crap dad, a piece of crap friend. I was just. But I was so much of my addiction that that's mm -hmm. all I was worried. I was just chasing my high. Yeah, what? yeah. So, how did you come out? from just chasing that high because because i know so many people i actually have a brother that's that's uh addicted right now yeah and he is like gone right you, you know what i mean yeah and what can i say what can i you know like me as a brother or, or me as a friend how can i engage and help those people you know what I mean? so basically you can only i mean you can only go out there and tr try and do your best, try and encourage them to change, trying to show them that, you know, what they're losing, you know, the family that loves them, that, you know, are there for them. But at the same time, you know, you can't overstress yourself and throw your family aside to try and save this one family person because they're only going to change on their own. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, so basically, when the last time me and my wife uh, got in a fight, she kicked me out. And I basically, all I had was two duffel bags. Uh -huh. And she's like, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to deal with this. And I had two duffel bags and I was like, so basically I was homeless. Mm -hmm. So I was couch surfing for like three, four months. I was mm -hmm. homeless. You know, I, I just from place to place. I mean, crack houses I would stay at. I mean, there was times I slept at the beach two, three nights in a row. Damn. I was at the casino a lot because it was always, you know, open 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So any money I could try and make, I was always at the casino. You know, and um, so finally I was like, man, you know, I just, and then uh, I was just tired of it. You mm -hmm. know, I was just like, I, I was, I was, I was kind of done. So I tried to make amends with my wife. Yeah. You know, and she finally, she finally got to the point where she says, you know, e either you're done with the drugs or me and my, me and the kids are, are, are gone. Yeah. We're going to yeah. leave and you'll never see us again. Dang. So when she actually put her foot down and uh -huh. made that, made, draw that line in the sand. Yeah. That's when I was like. Okay, I, I I I need to quit. Yeah, yeah. Wives you are know. great, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so it was uh, September 12th of 08. I was like, all right, if I go get, if I go ask my job back at the body shop, mm -hmm. then I quit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, uh, I got high that morning, 
And I went in there that afternoon asking for my job back because he ended up running into my older brother mm -hmm. and telling him that, uh, hey, have your brother come talk to me. I'll give him his job, my job back. Mm -hmm. You know, so I went in there and he's like, yeah, well, hi, uh, you know, you can start the next day. And uh, so basically I started working back and I, I basically quit right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was a miserable whole month. <laughs> I mean, just coming down. Yeah, yeah. So, so like... Um never done it right so no. like i i don't i don't understand like they said that uh going through withdrawals is even worse so um well because i've never done heroin but when mm -hmm. i was locked up in jail mm -hmm. i mean that's probably the worst thing that somebody can come off of is heroin mm. i mean or like the oxy the pills you know because yeah, yeah, yeah seeing what somebody went through like that is like 10 times worse than somebody coming off of meth. I mean, Damn. with meth, you know, I, I was I was always tired. I slept for days on end trying mm -hmm. to catch up on my all my sleep. Mm -hmm. um, just irritable. Any little thing would just piss me off. Like, mm -hmm. just anything. Like, the kids be playing and I'd just be irritable because they're, they're making noises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it was it was just, I mean, it, it, it was hard, but I mean, I, I, got, I had to fight through it. Yeah, yeah. You know? And how many years are you clean now? Uh, since 2008. Ooh. So what's that? 13, 14, going on 14 Bro, years. That's amazing. You know, man. but uh, that's awesome. When I quit the 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 math, you know, I picked up the I uh, started picking. I picked up the bottle. Uh, so I quit one addiction for another addiction, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, I, I'm supplementing the addiction that I had for the drugs because alcohol is legal. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's yeah. all good. So <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get my life back together. You know, we end up uh, moving in with my in-laws. You know, a three-bedroom trailer, and there's, you know, me and my wife, my three kids, her, her younger brother, her other younger brother with, uh, with his wife, and then my, and my, my mother-in-law and father-in-law in a three-bedroom mm. three trailer. So it was, mm -hmm. it was a little, uh, a little, a little cramped there, there you know? man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, so I started picking ourselves up, you know, and we ended up getting a, a single-wide trailer for ourselves. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. But on the weekends, I would go out, you know, I'd work Monday through Friday, and on the weekends, I would just go out to the bars and just get just get hammered. Hammered, yeah. You know what I mean? And um, so finally, I, 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 was, I was doing that. I was working all week, and then on the, on the weekend, go party and get drunk, you know? And a couple, you know, about a year and a half go by, two years, and then it starts, you know, a few drinks after work, now I'm drinking, uh, you know, a few shots after work, you know, and then it turns into the next day, the next day, and then the weekends just go go all out. Wow. You know, and um, it's funny because my pastor, who's a pastor today, is basically we ran we ran back together back in the day. Oh, shut up. Yeah, he was selling he was selling a um, uh, lot of drugs. Uh huh. A uh -huh. lot of drugs. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he even took a. He even took drugs into juvenile hall when he got arrested, uh, when he went to juvenile hall one time. Oh, dang. Yeah. Um, packing? Yeah, packing. Oh, wow. You know, and uh, it's crazy because, you know, he his his testimony against my testimony, you know, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, some little old lady in juvenile hall told him that he didn't even know her and said, son, God told me you're going to be a pastor one day. What? And he told the lady, you're crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but... Lo and behold, I mean, we lost, we lost touch, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He ended up moving, uh, he ended up moving away, um, and stuff, and we lost touch. Uh huh. But um, so I'm basically, you know, give me chills, man. So I'm basically running this, you know, trying to live my life right, trying to get right and get yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I'm, I'm just going in, in a, in a, in a downward spiral, yeah. spiral again, you know. Uh huh. And um. I just start having suicidal thoughts, you know. Start start thinking about killing myself. I mean, because I'm, uh, you know, I'm now I'm drinking every day basically, uh -huh. and I'm I'm about almost you know three years deep, you know, four year uh, four years deep now, after the two years of just partying every week, and now it's every day, and um, yeah, I was starting to like, man, my kids would be better off without me, you know that. I, I, I'm better off just just dying, leaving my kids alone, so they don't see this. That they wouldn't be see a piece of crap dad that I am, and you know it's just crazy. Yeah. And uh, That's some crazy thoughts, man. Right. Yeah. I mean, so if anybody's you know commit, thinking about suicide, don't do it. You know, because mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it, 
you, you're not, you, I mean, you might be thinking that you're taking away with pain from yourself, but yeah. dude, you're leaving so many else people in pain and yeah, hurt. Yeah, it's the most that, selfish that thing actually, that you can do. Yeah, that yeah. actually people love you and care for you, mm -hmm. you know? So, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you gotta go talk to somebody, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, so my little brother, actually, my little brother was getting in trouble. And my, inter my, my, my younger brother, he hits, uh, he's in juvenile hall. And uh, well, Miguel, I mean, Pastor Miguel, he was he was over there ministering juvenile home, and he's like, man, he, he tells me one day he gets out, he's like, bro, you need to come check out this church, you need to come check out Pastor Miguel, man. It's just this your brother. This is my little brother. Okay, you know, okay. my little brother, and uh, because he's in juvenile hall, you know, mm -hmm. basically going after the same footsteps that me, and my older brother left, I left. Yeah, you yeah, know, they basically yeah. going down the same path. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, nah, you know, I'm cool. I'm cool. You know, I don't need that. I don't need none church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? like, uh, but no, I went one time with him. You know, I went a couple times with him. Uh -huh. And then I was just like a hit or miss. You know, I go yeah. maybe once a year or so. Yeah. And because uh, I went to church when I was younger, you know, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. this and that. And uh, me and uh, me and Miguel start talking again, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. he, inv he invites us over to dinner. The pastor. Yeah, the pastor. Yeah, yeah. And uh, basically, he's like a, co he's basically, we're cousins, basically. We uh -huh. grew up, I mean, family always grew up, you know, barbecuing ever since we were little kids. You know, we were, and we were causing the same trouble. I mean, we were selling drugs, we were doing drugs, we were chasing the women. I mean, growing all through high school and all that, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so he invited me and the family over to dinner, and I'll be like, all right. Well, we'll come over there, and I'll be like, yeah. You know, I'll bring some beer, and he's like, "No, bro, I don't drink." Mm. And I'm like, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, "Come on, bro, seriously?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like. Yeah. And uh, so we go over there and we talk and and have dinner and stuff, and I was just like, "Man, this guy's different," you know. And, yeah. And he'd invite us over again, and and uh, and I'd be like, "All right, I'll bring some beer," and he's like, "No, bro, I'm seriously." I don't, I don't drink. <laughs> so like after the third dinner, you know, he's like, "Seriously, I, I don't drink at all, like yeah. nothing." And yeah, I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. You know, and um, 